Hi, this is Calico Kate. Let's make a bowl koozie. This is a beginner's. First thing you need is a 10 by 10, two pieces, a 10 by 10 fabric, two pieces of batting. Do not use what you would use for a hot pad with the foil. The batting is, the two pieces of batting is plenty that you won't burn your fingers as well as it won't hurt your microwave. First thing you're going to do is put the batting, your 10 by 10 fabric. I used a pre-cut fabric. And you're going to go diagonal from corner to corner. You're going to use a straight stitch and you're going to start and back up. Unless there's errors, which I could need a bobbin or something, I will do this in real time. And back up. Feel free to fast forward through parts that you don't need. But if I do this in real time and you're a beginner, which this is for, then you are able to go right along. Clip your ends as you go. It's just easier, I think. All right, and now to the other corner. Back up. And go clear to the diagonal end. Clip your threads at both ends and get your other piece of fabric. I'm using a red and a white. You can use what you like. Um, back up. I'm using variegated thread just because I like it for these kind of projects. Use what you have, especially if this is your first one. Be sure to back up each corner. And now, your last corner. One thing to know, watch where you want to end your needle. We you want to end at this last corner. And back up. And clip your threads. Now, you've got that. Fold over, batting side out. Um, with your fold, go over approximately an inch, and you're going to, whoops, you're going to come down approximately two inches. Start, back up, and then come down approximately two inches and back up. And we're now going to do this. Clip your ends, or threads. Make sure your corners match, and we're going to do that on this next side. Find your fold. Your fold's going to be on the other side of your foot. See where my fold is? I'm going to just slide it this way. I'm going to go over about an inch. Back up. at your two inch mark. You, if you feel better about marking your inch and your two inch, stop the video and do that. 
that is entirely up to you. Now, we're going to take the fabric. We're going to open it. We're going to lay it the other directions. So those two seams we just made are laying on top of each other and fold. Now, we're going to find this new fold. Over here is my seam and what we've, and that little bit. We're going to do something with this in a minute. But we're going to get this end fold approximately an inch over. Back. And about two inches. your threads, pull your thread under your foot. I don't like to use my clipper on my knee. I have a scissors, you know, that will clip my thread, but it, this thread that I'm using likes to go back up into the machine enough that I like to make sure I have a long tail. So go over about an inch, back space, go down about two inches, and back space, lift your foot, and that's done on that square. After you do eight of these, you'll be really good. Get your other piece of fabric, fold over, Find your fold, go over about an inch. So, back space, down about two inches, and back space again. Pull it out. Clip your threads. I have a little basket that I save my threads in small fabric in here to the left of me. That's what I'm throwing. I have carpet, so needless to say, I don't throw them on the floor. Okay, now my thread, my fold. Here's my first one I did. I'm going to the bottom. My fold is now over here, and I slide it to the right under my sewing foot about an inch, go down, back space, and then go down about two inches. And I have a little curve there, and that does, that's fine. And then clip your threads. I like to clip my threads as I go. If it doesn't bother you, clip them when you get done. Okay, open. Now, fold, and it's gonna lay kind of funny. You're gonna see this funny little deal here. Make sure your seams are on top of each other. Pin or clip if that helps you. We're going to go find my seam, my fold. I'm gonna go over about an inch. So, back stay, back, and then go down about an inch, and back. Because we want these seams to hold. Make sure your seams on top, your corners match. Here's my fold. Go over about an inch, come down, back to space, and then back. Lift your foot. Now, I have all four of these done. Okay, 
What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take pinking shears. You can take regular scissors, it doesn't matter. See where I have the seam and I have the fold. I'm going to cut close to the seam, but not on to the fold. Same here, the seam, the fold, and I'm going to cut. See how that is? And I'm gonna do that on all eight of these. So I have that one done, and now I'm coming back to the white one. Seam, fold, cut between them. If you didn't exactly backspace, back sew, whatever you want to call it, then don't cut that. Okay, now I'm going to do this one does not matter which one you do it, as long as you do all four of them. If you missed any seams, get them. Or any threads, I mean. And there we go. We're now ready for our next step. Now I open, you should have a bowl type with an indention and seams on all four that kind of bring up the bowl. We're now going to put both sides together so it really looks like a bowl. See that? We're going to make sure, and I clip, our corners match, and all of our seams match. And that's where I put my clips, where I have a seam, I clip. A corner, I clip. The seam, I clip, a corner, I clip, and I do this clear around those batting and fabric that I've already sewn together. And I've got it up here more so I can see it. Okay, now we're going to go back to our sewing machine, and I'm going to start a little past my clip on one of the corners. Does not matter which one. I like to start right past the clip. Then I lift my, go a little bit, back stitch, and then jump over. I finally came up with that word, back stitch instead of backspace. I pull out that corner clip, so there's no clip there. And I sew, back stitch, sew, and then I lift my foot and my needle and then I go up a space as close to the seam as I can but not at it so I have room to sew and back stitch because I'm going to have to pull this bowl through that. I'm going to go just a little closer. There we go. So I'm going to sew the back stitch and now Carefully making sure I have all four pieces sewn together. If you 
want a larger bowl or a smaller bowl, adjust with your fabric size. I just always make this one. And I go slow. I, I don't hurry this step. Make trying to make sure I get it all. But if I don't, I can come back and catch it all. Pull out your clips as you get to it. Leave your needle down and turn. I go in a, a little more than a quarter inch just to make sure I have it. Leave your needle down, lift your foot. And I have. Now I'm back to where I first um, started. I'm going to clip these threads so they don't get under my bobbin there. Put down the needle, turn. Then I'm going to go over what I first sewed and back stitch. So where I started actually is going to be sewn twice with two back stitches. Okay, now all these threads are gonna get cut. Make sure you got them all. I then clip my corners just so my corners lay down where I can. Some places I can because I backstitched there. So I just leave it all. Uh, I don't worry too much about this step. All right, so now I go to this corner and to this gap that we left at the beginning. I do that at the beginning so I don't forget to do it. All right, now, I think I have all of it. There's one little corner here I'm gonna fix. So, I've got all my corners. Now I'm gonna find my gap and I'm gonna bring it through. If you have any trouble with your machine, rethread it and check your bobbin. You may have to redo your bobbin. And this this is fiddly. This part is fiddly. I have a wooden turner if you like all that noise of me getting it that I'll check all my in, my corners and stuff and make sure they're, but you just keep messing with it until you get all that through that gap. And that's why we made the gap through. I like to use my finger if I can. My nails are usually long enough that they work, but I can't always do that, so. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. That's a sign it was made with love in my book. And then stretch it all out so it's nice and purty. And then we're going to zigzag, or if you prefer using a decorative stitch, that's fine too. But we're going to zigzag clear around just to go over all those stitches and to close this gap that we have here. I always start at the beginning of the gap. 
it go slow over those seams and backspace. That's how I do it. That's my disclaimer. Does not mean you have to do it that same place, um, but that's how I do it. And you kind of over those corners gotta push around. You do the size of your zigzag or decorative stitch, however you want. Put your needle down, foot up to turn your corners. These bowl koozies are great for something hot, but I have a lot that lack them for the rice. Needle down, foot up, and turn. I try and go slow over this part. You go whatever speed you're comfortable with. All right, needle down, foot up. Clip your threads. Look to make sure everything is fine. And now, my friend, you have a bowl koozie. <laughs>